It was a rundown building, nothing special, in the town of Junier, a short drive north of Beirut. But there were signs that had held dark secrets. Bars on the balconies and windows, window panes painted black to keep anyone from looking in or out. Inside were women like Samar, a Syrian who'd been looking for an escape from the war at home. Sama, which is not her real name, had contacted a smuggler in Lebanon who promised her a job in a restaurant. But once she got there, the smuggler took away her identification papers and locked her behind the doors of Sheh Maurice. What was supposed to be a nightclub was really a house of horrors. More than 75 women from Syria and elsewhere were imprisoned there, tortured, psychologically abused, and forced into sexual slavery. Months later, Samar and three other women managed to escape. They told their story to the police, and the investigation uncovered the largest human trafficking network ever in Lebanon. The raid on Cher Maurice happened a few years ago. But the trouble is, this sort of thing keeps happening. Investigators in Ukraine broke up a sex trafficking ring that had been preying on vulnerable women trying to escape the war in that country. The International Labour Organization, the ILO, says that at any given time, more than 27 million people are being subjected to forced labor. About 6.3 million of them are forced into the sex trade. Human trafficking and forced labor exist for two simple reasons. One, it's relatively low risk. An anti-trafficking group called Polaris says poor police training, laws that are ineffective or ignored, and even victim blaming embolden the traffickers. And two, there's a lot of money at stake. The ILO says forced labor generates $150 billion in illegal profits every year. Two thirds of that from commercial sexual exploitation. Breaking up these networks will take action on a number of fronts. The United Nations says a major challenge for immigration and law enforcement officials is to identify trafficking victims. But countries are working on it. The Philippines, for example, has come up with a checklist to identify missing victims, mm. as well as one to identify convicted or suspected traffickers. Governments and law enforcement agencies can improve and enforce laws already on the books with tougher prosecution of traffickers. Better coordination among local, regional, and international agencies will leave traffickers with fewer places to hide and make it harder to cover their tracks. And victims of trafficking need better protection and support so they can recover and rebuild their lives without the stigma of their past. Look, criminals involved in trafficking are responding to the basic principles of supply and demand. Reducing that demand, whether it's for forced labor or sexual exploitation, will go a long way toward ending human trafficking. And in the process, help prevent what happened to Summer from happening to so many others.